Every two years, Smart Growth America reports on how we're doing as a nation when it comes to pedestrian safety. They gather and analyze statistics from all 50 states and the 100 largest metropolitan areas in the country to measure what they call the Pedestrian Danger Index. And for the first time in more than a decade, Florida is not the worst state in the U.S. for pedestrian deaths. Although they released a full report just last year, SGA pulled together new data during the pandemic to see how things fared with less people driving during COVID. The results were surprising, but not in a good way. And as you're about to see, despite more attention being paid to the problem on multiple fronts, Jacksonville still has more work to do. Smart Growth America's Dangerous by Design 2022 report provides the most up-to-date look at how dangerous state and metro areas are for people walking and sheds light on the deadliest places in the U.S. based on traffic fatalities from 2016 to 2020. The 2022 report shows a significant shift from just a year ago. Here's a look at the 2021 standings for the metro areas with the most pedestrian deaths. As you can see, seven of the worst 10 cities were in Florida. In the latest report, Florida had only four of the 10 worst cities for pedestrian deaths. That looks like progress. But is Florida getting better or are other cities just doing worse? Well, consider this. Every city in the top nine would have topped the list just six years ago. And despite less people driving in 2021 due to the pandemic, pedestrian deaths are expected to reach an all-time high of over 7,000 nationwide. So what's causing this increase? Well, there are several factors, including the fact that people are now driving bigger and heavier vehicles. A study by the U.S. Department of Transportation found that pedestrians are two to three times more likely to suffer a fatality when struck by an SUV or pickup truck than when struck by a passenger car. It's not just the size of the vehicle, but the speed. If you've heard the phrase speed kills, it absolutely does. Going over the speed limit creates a higher risk for traffic crashes and also can lead to traffic fatalities. You might be astonished at how much just a 10 mile per hour increase in speed increases the chances that a pedestrian is going to die in an accident. According to the National Transportation Safety Board, at 20 miles per hour, there is only a 5% chance a person struck by a vehicle will be killed. At 30 miles per hour, that chance jumps to 45%. And at 40 miles per hour, 85% of the crashes involving a person walking are fatal. The reaction time for a, um, a, a driver is 1.6 seconds. It takes 1.6 seconds for the driver to realize there's a danger and to make a decision to take action. Obviously, the faster the vehicle is going, the braking distance is greater. But drivers are not the only reason there are now more pedestrian deaths than ever before. Too often, pedestrians are their own worst enemy, not using crosswalks or sidewalks, choosing instead to take a shortcut and cut across a busy street rather than walk a few extra feet to a safer zone like a crosswalk. And uh, pedestrians, please, please use sidewalks well provided, use crosswalks, pay extra attention. Our number one priority in Sheriff's Office is to reduce traffic crashes and traffic fatalities. Here in Jacksonville, JTA and the city have taken specific steps to help rid Jacksonville of this dubious distinction. JTA just completed a series of what are called Complete Streets projects designed to make roadways safer for all users. So you're providing safety enhancements as well as different things to eliminate barriers that would um, not allow people to commute either by walking, biking, or transit use. So you're just making those roads safer for the public. Since each neighborhood is different, each JTA Complete Streets project is customized for that community. The addition of bike lanes, the improvements to traffic control devices, as well as improving certain roadways to have like pedestrian medians, just to make sure that they can um, access the, the roadways, they can cross and they're safe. So there's, a, there's no kind of one size fits all for complete streets. The city has been adding new crosswalk indicators like this one in multiple locations across Jacksonville, often at mid-block to slow down traffic. 
A pedestrian just pushes the button and a bright flashing strobe light indicates to drivers that someone will be entering the crosswalk and they must stop. They also continue to push the idea of road diets like this one on the South Bank. Road diets slow down traffic by eliminating lanes, widening sidewalks, adding medians, bike lanes and more. You're reallocating the space that's in the roadway for other users. So it may be typically you might have a four lane facility, two through lanes in each direction. And in this case, what we're recognizing is that there's really excess capacity for the vehicles that are there. So what it is is that, that road that's four lanes probably operating for around a three lane capacity. And so how do we rebalance the facility to say, can we take the outer lanes, maybe the two outer lanes out, and repurpose those for cycling or for transit or for on-street parking or whatever the need may be. And the goal there is we're not trying to take away from vehicles. We're just trying to get a greater sense of the balance for all needs. The Federal Highway Administration says road diets calm traffic, significantly reduce the number of crashes, reduce weaving and left turn conflicts and more. Jacksonville has made key improvements over the past few years but to take another step and forever get out of the top 10 worst cities for pedestrian deaths, it will take all of us making a conscious effort. After all, safety is everyone's responsibility.